Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with property of the nerve action potential properties so it's also referred to as stimulus response characteristics in other words for a given action potential what are the different ways in which different kinds of stimuli how do they influence the behavior of an action potential that's what this is talking about. Different kinds of stimuli. How does it influence? How does it affect action potential? What are those characteristics of an action potential that you need to know about? So let's just go straight into it. One very important one. It's called the all or non law. All or non law. What this is talking about is that action potentials they don't have half commitment you understand that means they are not half-hearted either it is there or it's not there and when it is there it is with full force and it is referred to as two major things hmm? that is full in an action potential the amplitude and the velocity you see something like this the action potential okay this is the resting so you have something like this okay so this is talking about the amplitude here is millivolts here is time so here is talking about the amplitude In millivolts and then the time in milliseconds okay so it's when it's con an action potential happens it will be full to reach the full amplitude this highest point and it will happen at fullest velocity for that given nerve it cannot be slower so okay maybe the stimulus is not so much than the action potential will not reach half here no once the stimulus is up to threshold which is usually 15 millivolts more than the resting membrane potential okay so here is actually the threshold okay then here is the resting so once it gets to this place threshold it will shoot up it will occur fully to its fullest point okay so there's no small action potential action potential is full in amplitude and the speed it's full fullest velocity that's what all or none is talking about so it's just like a gun if you hold a gun like this and you shoot it it does it depend on how much you press the trigger okay if you press the trigger small the gun will shoot small <laughs> it either shoots or it does not shoot once you pull the trigger pull once it reaches the threshold that's what that's why they call this threshold here firing level just like a gun a firing level what it, once the trigger reaches a point where it will trigger the bullet it will shoot at maximum power that's what this one is talking about okay so let's let's talk about another property stimulus response characteristic we have another one refractory period okay what what do we mean by this refractory period is talking about the period of an action potential in which if you apply another stimulus it will not yield another action potential it's not lead to the generation of a new action potential 
Do you understand? It means that once a stimulus has occurred and you apply another one, it will not reach. And what, what, what do we mean by that? It means that that particular nerve is unreactive, is insensitive to a new stimulus at that particular point in time. It's a period, it's a time period. Okay? You have two types of, of refractory period. You have absolute refractory period. Absolute. Absolute refractory period. And you have the relative. Relative refractory period. Okay? So this absolute means that it's a period of time in that action potential curve or cycle in which nothing, no new stimulus, irrespective of the strength, even if you increase the strength of the stimulus, it will not respond. Stimulus response. That never will not respond to generate a new action potential. Even if you increase the strength of another stimulus. Okay? But this relative, it means that if you apply sufficient strength of stimulus it can lead can still lead to another new action potential okay but if you apply normal stimulus so that normally will lead to action potential it will not but a stronger one can so what what is the basis of this this thing this absolute refractory period is actually due to the closure of the sodium gate. Okay? Remember the ionic basis. It's sodium that causes depolarization. So it's the period of depolarization plus some of the period of repolarization plus repolarization. The early part of repolarization. Early part. Okay, like one milliseconds into repolarization. That is the period of absolute refractory period. Okay, so the sodium gates, they have closed. So new, no matter how much you apply, it will not lead to the opening of that sodium distance until it has reached a certain level before new it can now start responding in this relative. The relative is around repolarization. The later part of repolarization. Late part plus hyperpolarization. Okay, that is the relative, the late part of repolarization from here to hyperpolarization. That is the relative when you apply. And that period is due to the the the, the efflux, you know that's when potassium efflux happens around the repolarization side. Is due to potassium efflux. Potassium has not finished because when potassium efflux happens to the end, it will now stop, and then that's when a new depolarization or stimulus can cause another actual potential. But in this case, it's still open. It's still moving out but with a stronger distance it can still generate a new action potential but in this absolute one it is due to the closure of so the chlorium gate has just started closing so there's nothing you can do about it so that's 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 just what you need to know absolute refractory relative So number three, next one is what is known as summation. Summation. So this actually, it has to do with the transfer of action potential to another nerve. Okay, you know, we're going to deal with synaptic transmission, you know, between two nerves let's say this is the axon terminal of one nerve then this is the next nerve 
okay this space here is called a synapse you understand so summation actually is the addition of what is known as post synaptic potentials okay what this is actually talking about is that there are potentials known as graded potentials graded potentials in the sense that they are not up to threshold but when you add several sub threshold potentials an example is this postsynaptic potential when you add them together they are now big enough to reach threshold and now cause an action potential so it's something like this okay you have um so this is let's say this is the threshold level so you have potentials like this before it ends another one adds to it adds to it adds to it adds to it still it reaches threshold and then action potential happens so there are two ways in which you, these graded potentials can be summed up and this summation there are two ways they can be summed up one is called temporal temporal summation so that one is called spatial spatial summation what do we mean by this temporal summation has to do with time frequency so it means that it is several potentials sub threshold potentials are coming from the same nerve okay but fast enough several graded potentials okay are coming from the same name fast and before it's the graded potential ends another one very fast they are now summed up together okay is in the same nerve then special summation is actually the potential that is coming from different nerves so in special summation you have one nerve like this giving its own you have another okay another another one here another one here touching this one so it is different nerves giving their own graded potential that will sum up to make an action potential do you understand so temporal t they are separated by time it has to do with frequency from one nerve why spatial they are separated by space separated by space this one one nerve but they are separated by time do you understand that that's what I'm talking about separated by time separated by space summation so lastly we are going to talk about conduction how action potentials how are they conducted how are they conducted action potentials actually are conducted in two ways okay they're conducted in two ways now why it is true that the velocity of an actual potential happening you know this is one action potential this is the velocity but we are now talking of as it has to do with propagation the action potential happens then another side you know this is a nerve okay a nerve like this with dendrites then axon so how one potential starts from here that axon hillock this is a membrane one has happened it will spread 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 and like that propagated so this velocity we are talking is along the axon not the velocity of one action potential so the velocity is can be different based on whether it is myelinated or not so there are two types based on myelination in a myelinated nerve you know when you have a nerve like this the myelinated one that has this myelin sheet squan cells formed by squan cells or the squan cells like this they are myelinated those ones they conduct 
action potentials, electricity very fast, faster than they were myelinated ones. Do you understand? And these myelinated ones, the kind of conduction is called saltatory. Let's write it here. Saltatory. Saltatory conduction. Then the one without myelin, the kind of conduction is called electrotonic. Electrotonic conduction or electrotonic spread can also be no termed local circuit current or conduction. Do you understand? Local circuit. Let me write it here. Local circuit. Okay, so that's what happens. So, another thing also that you should know, very important point is that the bigger the nerve that's the diameter of the nerve okay you know i thought when we talked about the type classification of nerves we talked about type a b c so type a are the ones that are big they are fatter the diameter that's why they conduct faster so also the conduction depends not only on myelin but also how fat a nerve that is fat like this another one that is thin like this this one will conduct faster the velocity of conduction propagation will be faster diameter okay so there are two things that influence the speed the velocity of conduction so in saltation why it's fast like that is that it jumps here to the, to these points okay these points are known as nodes of ranvia nodes of Ranvia Right, so basically this is all you need to know about the properties of the nerve action potential stimulus response Characteristics right so in the next video. We're going to be dealing with synaptic transmission the synapse Synaptic transmission don't miss it for anything. All right. I'm going to see you in the next video